So late Friday night, I'm flying across country. The flight took five hours and 32 minutes because they were hitting some headwinds. It left a little late. You know, most of the people on that flight, they're sleeping. Some are watching DVDs, watching downloaded videos. Others are sitting there playing video games. I assure you, I was the only one of the 132 people on that sold-out flight that was there handicapping college basketball. And as I'm looking at the card, thanks to that spotty internet service on American Airlines that night, there was one of those games that was just screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me. And guys, that's exactly what I did, and that's exactly what I told you to do yesterday. Listen, there are games that stand out on cards. But when one of those games comes along and is just screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me, listen to that little voice whispering into your ear. Because nine times out of ten, those first inclinations, those hunches, you want to call them whatever, they're the ones you're going to win. And I think that over the long haul, you will always win more of those games than you'll lose. And you'll always make money over the long haul. The game I'm talking about is Marshall. Yesterday, I used the Thundering Herd at home, as I have done many times this season. They were a three-and-a-half point favorite at game time. I had them at four. Hey, it didn't matter. They rolled, as I told you they would, against Old Dominion. And it was the 14th ever 20 dime release of my career in college basketball. And you got it for $44, over half price off, saving $55 off the regular price. Now, listen, guys, um, you know, so many times in my career, people have said, well, what do you look for when you're handicapping games? And there's certain things, depending on the sport, you know, in baseball, for example, with pitchers. If a guy who is a steady starter, not a guy that's in and out of the rotation, for example, but a guy that's a steady starter, I look for streaks of three. Good three start stretches, poor three start stretches. And I reverse field in fourth start situations, either going on him or against him, depending on how he's fared in the previous three starts, if he's one of the guys I'm considering that night. In football and basketball, different, whether it's pro or college. In pro football and NBA action, I don't really get too concerned about revenge. Uh, in the NBA, I look for situations where you've got tired teams, three games and four nights, back-to-back -back road games. You know, those type of situations. In college basketball, it's all about revenge. College football to a certain extent, but I always find that revenge is a much better motivating factor fueling payback wins in college hoops. But another situation that I look for specifically in college basketball applies to that game against Marshall and Old Dominion. Listen, I know defense won the Super Bowl, but to me, defense does not win in college basketball generally when I'm looking at a game from a handicapping perspective. Now, you had a Marshall team that was number five in the nation in scoring yesterday playing at home, 85.1 points a game. Marshall gives up almost as many points, about 80 points a game, okay? You have an Old Dominion team that was one of the nation's stingiest teams defensively, only giving up, you know, somewhere in the mid-60s. But Old Dominion also struggled to score. They only averaged about 67 points a game. So you had a high-scoring offensive team playing at home against a stingy defensive team that has trouble putting the ball on the hoop. And that line was four, four and a half. That's why the game was screaming, bet me, bet me, bet me like crazy in my ear. Because when I see those situations, here's what I always think about. You've got an athlete. You know, a lot depends on the system that the coach has. And let's face it, Marshall has a high-flying, up-tempo style that makes it very attractive to put points on the board and very easily accomplished. But... It also comes down to the type of player you have, and it's my belief, and I think a lot of people in basketball will say the same thing, that it is far easier to teach a good athlete how to play defense based in the system that your coach is using than it is to get that good athlete and turn him into a talented offensive performer, no matter the system that you're using. So when the system goes your way, in Marshall's case it did in terms of putting points on the board, when the athletes the hell with playing defense. They're there to score points, and you're playing at home. That's why you have to look at those certain situations, and you find that quite often in college basketball, guys. Listen, you're going to have games like Texas A&M and Kentucky yesterday in overtime that can go one way or another. You're going to have some monstrous upsets that you look at the game afterwards and go, what the hell happened? Minnesota, first Big Ten win of the season, knocking off Maryland, okay? You're going to have those type of games frequently in college basketball, but again, you have to look at the revenge situations. You have to look at travel situations, which sometimes happen in college basketball where you're going to see a team playing three out of five games. You have to look at the sandwich situation, which often gives you a trap game. You know, a team that is coming off a big game has another big game coming up. 
And then that middle game, that's a sandwich game, that's a trap, and then you have to look at the styles of play because the contrast in styles often is what gives you the value on the board. Anyway, that's my dissertation on college basketball handicapping. Let's get with it here. Uh, yesterday, the complimentary plays, well, they stunk. They went one and three. But listen, guys, the bottom line is this. <laughs> I had the 20 time best bet on Marshall. Uh, I needed Marshall. I didn't need the free plays because, as I always say to you, even though I win a large majority of them, and I've always had throughout my career, you know, the free plays are basically the best of the worst. They're slightly flawed plays that, for one reason or another, I decide to not use as a personal best bet, and I relegate them to free play status. And that's just how it goes. And yesterday it didn't go well as I went one and three. It's really strange because when you think about it, I think the previous Saturday I went 0-3. Yesterday I went 1-3, and and yet four times the past eight days I had 2-0 and sweeps. Go figure. That's why they're complimentary plays. Hey, listen, I've got a complimentary play coming up on your game between George Washington and LaSalle. It goes at noon Eastern time in just a minute. And FYI, those complimentary plays the past 222 days, 218 wins, 192 losses, and six pushes. And that's with the 1-3 and three record. I can live with that. Uh, the big feature play today is Chuck O'Brien, uh, 59 winner, number 19 out of 28, Temple and Houston. It goes at 7 o'clock Eastern time. It's the half-price play of the day simply by using coupon code CHUCK. It is two and a half times stronger than his college basketball winner yesterday, uh, the 20-dimer that he had on um, – Texas A&M against Kentucky, and I think he's on a 23-12 and 12 run with those 20-dime releases. Uh, it matches the Friday 50-dime winner in the NBA on the Rockets over the Suns that you got for half price. It matches Wednesday's 50-dime college winner on Arizona, hammering Arizona State at home. I think they won that game 99-61, to 61, laying 12 and a half points. You got it for half price, and it matches last Sunday's 50-dime winner with Michigan State. I think it was by 18 over Indiana or 19 points over Indiana that you got for over half price off. Again, it's the half price play of the day simply by using coupon code CHUCK. All your other discounts, all your other coupons, etc. are over on the homepage. FYI, Jeff Benton, who had won those three straight 100 dime major wager releases this week, all of which you got for over half price off, and who had won six straight days, went down in flames last night, his 150 dime play, the fourth ever in his career, uh, did not cash in, unfortunately, uh, as Oregon fell. Uh, well, they got the win, but they failed to cover at home against Oregon State. So uh, moving on. Oh, FYI, uh, also Chuck O'Brien, college basketball record since returning to the site now about three months ago after a near three-year absence. 36 wins, 18 losses on the push, and $10 betters have made $4,765. Okay, your first game. Um, you know, even now and then, uh, they say the blind squirrel finds a nut, and that's the only way I can explain how the hell LaSalle the two wins that they have in their, what, uh, last 19 games, they knock off Dayton at home, and then they knock off St. Bonnie at home. Go figure. Otherwise, they lose 17 out of 19 games. Uh, today, they're a 16-point underdog at George Washington. I don't know if that's enough points. <coughs> I'm getting choked up talking about the Explorers. You have to excuse me here, guys, but... Listen, LaSalle is number 329 in the nation when it comes to scoring. They only average 63.7 points a game. They only have like a six- or seven-man rotation. They've got one good player in Jordan Price, a guy who transferred from Auburn a couple of years ago. He generally plays about 40 minutes a game because they don't have anybody else. you got a George Washington team that, although not a huge offensive team, is a team that hits the boards hard, plays good defense. They just snapped a two-game losing streak with an 81-74 win at Duquesne on Wednesday. Um... I think you got to go once again with uh, George Washington in this one and lay the big number. Uh, it's nice that LaSalle beat St. Bonaventure in its last game, but shocking to say the least. So I'm going to go with, once again, George Washington minus points at your complimentary play, and I wish you well, guys, and I'll talk to you again on uh, Monday when we do this one more time.